Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to yet another episode of DMTV. This is the Faces of DM25 episode, a series exploring the people making up our movement, where we discuss the inspirational stories that are behind those people and why and how they took the step from citizen to activism and politics. I'm Johannes Fair. Um, I'm a volunteer coordinator for DM25, speaking to you from Berlin. And I'm really happy that I'm joined here tonight uh, by these people, uh, Nina, Lilia, and Jonas. Uh, welcome to the Faces of DM episode. Um, good to have you. Thank you for the for taking the time to speak to uh, all of us. Um, all of you have been uh, DMers that are active on the ground, um, helping uh, as we are in this current situation on having a war on on European uh, soil, um, helping people to who are suffering from that war. Um, and we are going to speak uh, about this topic tonight on how to be active on the issue uh, by helping people and of course, also furthermore, um, what everyone can do to help trying to end this war. Um, but before we go into detail about that, um, I would ask you to introduce yourself shortly. And I would like to start with Nina. Just tell us a little bit um, about you. Where are you? Who are you? Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Nina. I am 27, nearly. I come from Serbia originally, but I'm also, uh, I also have Bulgarian origin and I'm currently based in Montenegro. Great. Thank you very much. Lilia. Hello everybody. My name is uh, Lilia. I am uh, coming from Bulgaria, but I also have uh, dual citizenship. I'm having also a Greek citizenship. I share my time between Greece and Bulgaria. And uh, I am kind of active recently in DM and Mera 25. And uh, it helps a lot that uh, my city in Bulgaria is exactly on the border with Romania and all the refugees are passing by through here. Thank, Thank you, you Nizia. Um, for the, for the listeners also, Meta 25 are the parties that DM25 is building up as part of our movement in different countries like Greece, uh, and also Germany, where Jonas is based, I think, uh, Jonas. Yep. Hey, I'm uh, Jonas. I'm French and I'm now based in Berlin where I studied for two years. Um, I'm 21. <clears throat> I'm right now in a positive tested to Corona shared flat. So I might cough when once in a while, but, um, yeah, very happy to be here as well and active with DM since November, I think. Thank you, Jonas. Um, yeah, I think the pandemic is something that we almost, uh, are forgetting about, but it's still something of course, that we also, um, uh, yeah, need to work on, um, and overcome several things. Um, one of the things that everyone of course can do is becoming a, a, a member of a political organization like DM25, um, to get active on all these, uh, kind of issues. And, um, yeah, I think as a follow-up question, it would be nice to hear from you. Why did you, uh, join DM25? Um, when was it, how did you become a member? Um, and what is actually the most important thing that you would like to do in your country with the M25. Um, maybe we can start again with Nina. Okay, so uh, I've been following uh, the development of the M25 since, uh, since the beginning, but I only joined in January, 2021, and I rather joined to support the movement, um, but I wasn't very active. I was quite busy with, with my personal life. I, I joined the local DSC. But since it was in Serbia, it didn't really last long. And in the Balkans, the, the DM is not, is not very active, unfortunately. Uh, I'm not even sure how many people are aware of, of DM. So we're trying to spread the awareness um, at the moment. Uh, I became active in DM um, in the end of January, beginning of February. 
uh, because of the situation between Russia and Ukraine, and this is when I uh, joined DSC for um, Peace and International Policy, uh, where we started uh, working on uh, campaigns uh, that were dealing with the situation. And then as the situation intensified, our activities um, multiplied as well. Thank you very much. Um, I think, yeah, uh, that is just very good that you you come. And I think we have a lot of work ahead of us in many countries, but uh, it's great to see that we are actually active on the ground uh, in different places and uh, making a difference. And uh, maybe now we can switch it around and go to Jonas, since I know that he also has been active with the local collective here in Berlin. Yep. So I <clears throat> also follow GM for a long time, but uh, started to be active in November 2021 in the Berlin DSC. Um, yeah, I think the reason that built my interest to GM, GM was the uh, Euro crisis. And um, yeah, I get interested in GM policies through these events. But now in Berlin, I'm mostly involved in just organizing when it goes well once in a week um, uh, meetings where we meet with other uh, volunteer or members of GM and um, and let's add something else, but I forgot. So never mind. Yeah, I'm just trying to be active once in a week in um, this dimension. Great. I think, yeah, going to a local collective meeting uh, is actually a first, a great first thing to do. So if you're in Berlin and, you know, you see that uh, video still in early 2022, maybe on Thursday evenings at 7 p.m. At, at the Volksbar, close to the Volksbühne, where DM was actually founded, you can meet Jonas. <laughs> um, Lilia, uh, when did you become a DM member? And I actually know that you are active in several countries for DM25, right? That is correct. Uh, I'm um, from the very beginning a member of DM from the very first months of creating uh, DM. And uh, later, uh, I'm from the founding members of uh, Mera25 in uh, Greece. I have been following uh, Varoufakis and his ideas from uh, before he has created DM25. I have uh, read most of his books and uh, publications. So I was uh, kind of tending towards his ideas from the beginning. And when DM was created, it was uh, just the correct uh, place for me to join and uh, to do something. For a few years, I was uh, not very active in the beginning because uh, I had uh, kind of uh, personal problems. But the last uh, three years, I'm trying to participate more actively, especially in Greece. And uh, uh, the reason for this is that uh, I believe we have to live in a better world and to do something better. Uh, what Nina says uh, about Balkans, it's very correct. It's uh, not easy to convince uh, Balkan people uh, to have a hope and to believe in something new. This is why maybe in Bulgaria, DM is still uh, kind of uh, sleeping. And this was the initial idea last year to try to wake up the organization in Bulgaria because some uh, people tried to start it and to build up the organization a few years ago, but it was not successful attempt. So from last year, I'm um, trying more actively to uh, rebuild the organization. And up to now, there are about 60 members that are interested and showing interest and about 20 people were coming to our regular monthly meetings and uh, we are starting to, to do something. And now with the crisis in uh, Ukraine, uh, the, the things uh, are becoming uh, uh, one idea uh, more important because uh, 
I believe only organization like DiEM uh, that is based uh, on uh, uh, more humane uh, uh, ideas can really support people and help them to understand uh, uh, how uh, nonsense is uh, a war because uh, the only people paying the price for the war are the poor people. Rich people never pay the price. So this is it. Thanks, Nidilia. Um, I think, yeah, it's a very important thing that you just said that, of course, um, we have to be aware on who actually suffers from the um, from the war besides, you know, national identities and uh, borders and uh, all these things that we, um, yeah, tried not to care too much in the M25 about um, because we are a transnational movement that, that um, yeah, works beyond borders um, and beyond uh, national identities um, and, uh, yeah, regards every human being as the same. Um, I think it's also maybe a good point to just point out um, to say that we are aware that this is just yet another war. This is not the only war that has been going on in the, in the last years. And we are, of course, active on all kinds of um, fronts against all of those wars. And we that's why our petition against this war also states no more wars. Uh, in general, there's a war in Yemen going on. There's other conflicts around the world that we are also aware of. Um, if you want to sign the petition, by the way, you can go to dm25.org slash peace um, and spread the, the news about um, that petition and that transnational effort to work um, against uh, yeah any kinds of uh, conflicts and uh, 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 wars uh, going on. Um, this, of course, this issue in general is a, is a sad one, um, and uh, we are all, uh, yeah, aware of the of the suffering going on. And one way, of course, on to be active and to be productive and to show that uh, this is not the end and uh, the world will go on and we'll try to make it a better place is to be active with the people that are directly suffering and uh, all. Uh, the three of uh, the people who are with me here um, have been active on that. So maybe we can now uh, hear from you what you have already been doing um, in your your countries um, to be able to help uh, the people suffering from, from the current crisis. Uh, Nina, let's start again with you. Yeah. Uh Thank you, Johannes. Actually, I'm not uh, in the, yeah, active in the field like uh, like you elaborated. Uh, my first activity in, in this uh, topic was to create the petition and uh, the petition text that you just mentioned. And thank you so much. Please, please um, read the text. Don't just click the button. It's very important that we understand what Lilia was trying to say about how um, the war only hurts the small people. And this is uh, this is relevant both for Ukraine and Russia and Belarus uh, citizens. It's not just, uh, I mean, all of them have to have to migrate. They're all victims of the same political game, uh, if we if we may call it that way. Um, as for the activities in the field, uh, I have I actually got involved in in the whole situation because I have a lot of colleagues that are Ukrainian citizens, and I was very emotionally um, hit by this um, by the situation. And uh, what I what I tried to do is to help them while they were migrating to Poland uh, with other people, connect them with some organizations, my friends in Poland, and help them move as as um, painless as possible. Uh, so this is the only activity that I did in that in that direction. Uh, but I am active with a small group of uh, people that are coming from the uh, DSC for Peace and International Policy, and we're working on a campaign that is advocating for peace, essentially trying to um, elaborate what what it means to have a war and uh, who who does it serve and how how we are all affected with it and how we can all say no to it as well. Like you said, Johannes, this is not the only war happening right now and people are suffering around the world. 
and we are also, we, we will have inflation and we will have other consequences in, in other countries around, uh, across the globe, not just Europe. It's very important that we understand this mechanism and uh, who is the real enemy. It's not Russians against the Ukrainians. It's the people against uh, the oligarchs and uh, the governments that are supporting the military industry and everyone who is profiting from this. Thank you, Nina. Um, since the, the short cap has come up uh, now a couple of times, I was want to shortly say DSC means DM25 Spontaneous Collective. So um, uh, these are all collectives active in different fields locally or um, on thematic uh, topics like peace and international policy that we are working on, of course, uh, on the long term also and steadily uh, as we are doing it on other fields like the Green New Deal for Europe, where we um, already, you know, have a policy in place that proposes something that is different and makes us um, inde independent from uh, gas price shocks, for example, um, and also the influence of uh, the oligarchs that possess most of the companies that are actually profiting from, from that trade. Um, Jonas, what have you been doing um, uh, to yeah, be active and trying to help something that just every citizen, every civil society can do uh, when there's times like this? Yeah, I think I recognize myself as well in the process that Nina described that I first get got very emotionally in touch with it because of friends or people I knew that were... <clears throat> living there or had a Ukrainian roots and then I directly texted my uh, former music teacher who was from Ukraine and I talked a lot with her and then in a second time I contacted um, a Ukrainian friend that I know here in Berlin and we already talked a lot about the situation in her country a few months before the war actually started but um, since this, I was in very close contact with her because of her family, and I <clears throat> asked her how um, they are doing and how they see the plans of escaping the country. And yeah, one day she just asked me if I actually could uh, help her to go with her to Romania and um, catch her family up there and uh, drive them until Berlin. So this was last weekend and um, yeah, it was a very quick and spontaneous decision, but in this time I thought this is the only thing I can do. And um, yeah, so we went to Romania together and found <clears throat> or picked up her family or the kids and the female parts of her family because her big brother and her father have to stay in Ukraine because they are um, men and they have to go to war, which was of course also a terrible situation. And then we drove through Romania for, I don't remember exactly how many days, because I think I lost a little bit the uh, sense of time, but we went to <clears throat> Romania, Hungary, Czech Republic and um, Germany. And now, yeah, they are the six of them safe in Berlin in a very small flat, but it's of course better than what they escaped. And, um, yeah, this was a very tiring experience, but uh, I felt that this was just the thing I could help with in this moment. Thank you, Jonas. Uh, yeah, I think um, this is uh, this is a great uh, help that you gave to to people, and I wanted to say that uh, I also uh, was shortly involved in um, helping for some hours the other weekend. In, uh, in a refugee welcome center here at the bus station in Berlin. There's by now probably more than 10,000 people arriving uh, in Berlin every day uh, that are uh, had to leave their homes. Um, and that is, of course, a very dire and emotionally draining situation, as, as you all um, have said already, and it was the same for me. Um, the only good thing then is to see that actually civil society people are active on that. Um, uh, you can see thousands of people in Berlin that are uh, giving donations that are trying to help. Um, of course, it's very um, difficult, especially to find places to stay for people. Uh, this is the biggest issue, I think, in Germany. Um, but in general, it's great to see that so many people are active and 
I think we are also here talking about it, uh, since to show people that, um, yeah, it is not that hard to do something. Um, I know that everyone also has a full life and limited time, but I think uh, there's many things that uh, one can actually do. Um, Lilia, what have you been doing uh, so far uh, uh, in that particular situation now? Uh, I was uh, kind of lucky uh, that uh, exactly this period from the end of January, uh, me and my husband, uh, we arrived in uh, Bulgaria and uh, we were planning to stay here for a few months. Uh, and we are staying exactly in the town of Ruse. It's a small city in Bulgaria, exactly on the border with Romania, 60 kilometers from uh, Bucharest. And uh, it's uh, one of the main gates uh, uh, between Bulgaria and uh, Romania. So uh, uh, one big amount of people are passing exactly my city. Uh, trying to escape the war. So uh, eh, we were very lucky because uh, we were uh, involved from the very first moment and up to now uh, in a lot of uh, actions uh, organized by municipality, by simple people, by volunteers, by uh, different organizations supporting uh, these uh, families uh, arriving here. Even tonight at uh, seven o'clock, we are going to uh, meet at the border, uh, Ukrainian family arriving uh, from Odessa. Up to the last moment, they were thinking that they will be able to make it there and uh, not to travel because they're a big family, uh, a couple, four kids and a grandmother. But uh, finally, they were forced to travel, and uh, this morning they called me and uh, they asked for our help. So we are going to meet them, and uh, we have already found a flat for them to stay for one few days, one, two days, and after that, they are planning to go to Greece. Uh, what actually we do here is uh, we organize, first of all, uh, buses and uh, minivans and uh, simple cars, but usually buses. This is uh, the most convenient uh, transportation. Uh, Bulgarian buses are going to the border, Romania, Ukraine. And uh, there they're collecting people, driving them back uh, to the Bulgarian border. And at the border, exactly where is my city, uh, different organizations are waiting for these people and organizing uh, the next steps of uh, their trip. Uh, most of the people arrive here with a specific plan. They uh, have already communicated with uh, relatives, friends, uh, organizations, and uh, they say directly where they want to continue their journey. So we, like volunteers, we are helping them to... Uh, reach the bus station to take the next bus uh the train we are organizing uh, uh some people to travel by car all this for free of course uh, covered by different uh, uh funds and uh, organizations and donations from people uh usually there is a gap uh of few hours or few days uh between arriving to the border, usually they arrive late at night, uh, extremely uh, tired. Uh, and uh, this gap of few days or few hours from one trip to the other, uh, we are trying to fill it up with uh, uh, normal humane accommodation to stay in a warm place, to have something to eat, to uh, have the basic things that they need, starting from sanitary napkins to diapers to hot soup to medicines. Some people are having a medical condition, so we have doctors. We have the Bulgarian Cross, uh, Red Cross, uh, helping as well. Uh, 
there are people that uh, really need uh, some clothes, so we are bringing them uh, clothes as well. And uh, some people have uh, absolutely no money, uh, so uh, we are trying to help them uh, with some pocket money because uh, uh, some people are really desperate. Uh, in general, uh, maybe the most important thing is we are trying to provide them uh, hope, uh, smile, and uh, uh, yeah, hope for the future. Uh, because I have been living many years in uh, Russia during the communist time, I have finished university there, I have been working there. Uh, for me, it's a very painful situation because I have friends from Russia. I have friends from Ukraine. I have friends from all these ex uh, countries of uh, the USSR. And today I see my old friends uh, not speaking to each other, uh, hating each other, uh, trying to do something bad to each other. Uh, we are talking about uh, people that a uh, few years ago were sitting together, having fun together. And it's very painful, very painful to see this, to see this situation and uh, uh, to be part of it. It's crazy to see educated people that were university teachers, that were professionals, that were doctors, that were uh, having one normal life that in one night they had to leave everything and to start from the beginning. This is why I believe we have to help to stop this craziness. And yes, what uh, Nina says is very correct. Uh, it's not uh, the point of view is, uh, and uh, the important thing is not uh, uh, the conflict between Zelensky and Putin. It's, uh, the truth, it's much more serious and much bigger and it's behind. This is a, uh, the, the front stage of the theater. Behind the much bigger interests that are trying to, uh, demolish the middle class all over Europe, that are trying to, uh, make people to be slaves, to, uh, be at the edge of survival and, uh, uh, this is why we have to fight the oligarchs and this uh, bunch of rich people that are trying to actually eat up the world. If we want to have a future, uh, of course, I am uh, much older than you. I am 53, but I would love my kids and all young people like you to, to have a better future and to have a hope. Thank you. Thank you, Lilia. Um, yeah. I told you, I speak too much. <laughs> no, not at all. Uh, I think, uh, this was, uh, very good to, to let you elaborate on and, uh, share your thoughts uh, with all of us. Um, thank you for that. And, um, yeah, I think that is exactly the thing that we are trying to prevent in DM 25 from the beginning as DM was found, founded in the a crisis of, uh, in the aftermath of the crisis of 2008 and what followed with the Greek spring and the crushing of the Greek spring. And back then the, you know, the German, uh, oligarchs and, uh, mainstream newspapers putting the Greeks, uh, the, the, um, lazy Greeks as they call them, um, wrongly, uh, on the front page in terms of that's the people that actually, uh, are the problem, which is of course, has been never the truth. And so DM was founded around, um, that, uh, yeah, uh, to bring a counter narrative of people, um, actually working together, uh, despite any, you know, national nationalities or other differences that they might have, uh, that they can solve by talking to each other, like, uh, people in a normal civilized, uh, society should actually be able to do. Um. Okay, uh, since we are doing this work in DM25, maybe uh, for, for to the, towards the finish line of this uh, uh, small call uh, and uh, uh, stream uh, to uh, 
we could talk uh, a little bit about what you actually think where um, you would like to DM25 to see in the next couple of years to solve some of these questions that and problems that uh, we have already mentioned and are aware of um, on that particular issue, but also beyond. Um, and uh, also, if you want to, you know, make a call for what people out there should actually be, do, be doing in this particular crisis now and in general, then also feel free to do that. And yeah, Nina, let's go back to you. So the first question was, where would I like to see DM going with this? Um, well, I think that since most of us here can agree that the we don't that the enemies are not we're not each other it's we have a common enemy altogether i guess there there is a very long process ahead of us of um educating everyone else and uh and talking to people just talking to to people a lot uh and and working together on this uh, i think this dm has a great potential to start to start with this and uh i think if we can spread it to the balkans then it's a it's a great indicator that we're doing the right thing because as you know the balkan is a a barrel of fire with uh, too, too many potential for um nationalistic hatred which is not very founded like any other uh hatred between uh, people based on nationality ethnicity and so on um and i i would just like to send a message that next time you are angry because uh you're not feeling safe or because your wallet is too small for your shopping next time you feel angry uh, because you you can't send your child to a good school um just think about who you're angry at think about who is uh disabling you from leading the life that you want to lead you, you, someone is keeps putting their hands into our pockets every day and we let them uh so it's not it's not the case that we are working for someone and we're all like uh, lydia uh, is trying to say being slaves for someone else we are electing our representatives and they work for us and sometimes it's very good to remember that people in the balkans keep forgetting it we have elections in serbia in two weeks and we already know who is the winner. It's it's been like that since for for two decades, for nearly two decades or so. Um, it's it's everything is predecided for us, and this is not this is not how we designed a, a democratic world. We are the ones that need to start making decisions and taking responsibility. So it's not it's not even someone else that we're angry at. We're angry at ourselves for not having more control over our lives. I'm going into philosophy now, so I would like to cut it here. Actually, why not? <laughs> why not to be a little bit uh, philosophical? Um, actually, also, you reminded me just now when you said about the Balkans, uh, uh, what you just said, um, that also I, from personal experience, just want to share this. Uh, the Balkans is also this this beautiful place that we in Central Europe don't know too much about. Um, I've been once traveling to Albania and it was great for me, for example, to see how there is a century long tradition of Muslims and Christians and other confessions to live very close together in one city with the, um, you know, the, 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 the houses of the different gods uh, next to each other and no problem about it. Um, also something that, for example, in Germany, and the right wingers are trying to tell people that, that you know, when the Muslims come, that, that is suddenly a problem, which is, of course, complete bullshit. Um, so, uh, yeah, uh, let's also, uh, I'm just very glad to see that uh, DM is, has DMers on the Balkans that are active. Um, and thank you for, for sharing your thoughts. Uh, Jonas, uh, what would you like uh, to do with the M25 maybe, but also what would you like? the F25 to see to be doing um what's your thoughts also philosophical thoughts you can share them <laughs> no i think i'm not gonna go into so much uh too deep philosophical thoughts but 
yeah, what I'm thinking every time I'm organizing these Thursday events is that I actually think this is the most powerful thing DM can also make just to <clears throat> build up a space where people can um, exchange and talk towards each other. And I think this is also the place where a lot of ideas are, uh, are shared and I feel this is such a powerful tool to enable people to build up a position through discussion and exchanges more than through just listening what big medias are or what, what we are being told by, by medias. And, um, and, um, yeah, I feel also with this whole Ukrainian situation, I learned so much through talking with people who are all, of course, directly confronted to this. But I think this is, yeah, maybe what DM can, 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 can do in my mind. Thanks. Um, and then maybe once we, you know, come together and discuss and uh, write a program, like we, for example, have done for Germany, um, to also be, yeah, active out there, um, block some street or, uh, help someone who's coming uh, new to the town to, for them to find a place, whatever it might be, I think to then also enact, um, is, is something very powerful. Uh, Lilia, what's your thoughts on, on where you would, um, see us going? Uh, well, uh, I'm not so optimistic on the future of our world. I think the the refugee crisis, the climate change, uh, will get worse and worse. And, uh, I'm saying this because, uh, it means we have to organize and to prepare better for a better fight with better, uh, arms and, uh, uh, to involve more and more people to train, to fight, uh, all this crisis and all these people behind because uh, there is still opportunity to build so-called another world, to reach that point that one Fakis is calling that another uh, now, because there is a possibility to uh, build up a better world, but it needs uh, uh, a lot of effort and uh, a lot of people to be involved. Uh, I think DM should, uh, uh, tend to, uh, proving to people that, uh, if it was possible for people from different religion, from different, uh, nations to live together without fighting each other 100, 200 years ago, it's possible to do it now. For example, in my country, in Bulgaria, uh, I was raised, uh, in such a situation, we were uh, Christians, we were Muslims, we were Jews, we were Armenians, we were Arabs, uh, living in the same country, everybody having uh, their religion, their uh, uh, culture, their language, but we were not fighting each other. We were together. Exactly the same situation was uh, in Greece, in general in Balkans, because uh, Balkans is a crossroad of Europe, so uh, a lot of religions and people and nations uh, have uh, met here and uh, they were living for centuries together. Uh, if it was possible to have in the same city of Thessaloniki uh, 11 different nations having business, having uh, communities and uh, living together, if it was possible in ex Yugoslavia to have this situation. If it was possible in uh, the Bulgarian city of Filipopoli, Plovdiv, to have uh, 13 different nations living together and having uh, at the same square uh, synagogue and uh, Muslim, uh, uh, just a second, my battery is gonna go down. Uh, it's possible to do it now. I think, uh, uh, what these oligarchs are trying to do nowadays is uh, following the principle divide and conquer. Divide and conquer. This is what they are doing. They are 
creating these little problems between us, making us to hate each other, to fight each other. So when we are not anymore together, we are weaker because there is one uh, very simple principle of uh, physics, uh, because I am an engineer by education. If you have many sticks together and you try to break them, it's not so easy. But if the sticks are one by one, it's very easy to break them. So this is what they're trying to do. They're trying to separate us. So we are not together and it's much easier to break us. So let's fight. And I hope the end is going to help us to bring more and more people and to be together, to fight together for the same ideas, for a better, better future, for another now that is going to uh, help us to be alive, to be happy, and to have a normal life. And not to have war. Thank you. Yes. Lay down your arms. Uh, thank you, Lilia, so much. And thank you, Nina and Jonas, uh, to be joining uh, tonight for yeah, sharing your thoughts and sharing what you've actually been doing. Uh, this is also a call for everyone to be maybe not optimistic, but to be hopeful um, because there will be a future and we need to organize uh, together to actually not de let us divide and um, bring people together. If you out there want to um, join Nina, for example, um, in the Peace and International Policy Collective, um, or if you want to join uh, Jonas in Berlin, um, or Lilia building DiEM25 in Bulgaria, or at any pl other place uh, across Europe and beyond, um, then please do so. Go to dm25.org slash join, um, and let's work on uh, what we actually have been trying to describe um, tonight in this live stream and uh, build, build this better future together. Carpe diem. <laughs>